Welcome to CEF Insights, your source for closed-end fund information and education, brought to you by the Closed-End Fund Association. My name is Diane Merritt. Today we are joined by Dennis Emanuel, closed-end fund expert and founder of AED Fund Solutions, LLC. Dennis was a closed-end fund analyst for more than 20 years and formerly held positions as the director of ETF and closed-end fund strategy at SSNC Alps, as well as managing director of ETF and closed-end fund research at Citigroup. Our discussion will focus on a review of activity in the closed-end fund market last week and where investors may look for opportunities. We're happy to have you with us today, Dennis. Thank you, Diane. Happy to be here. Dennis, the markets had another good week last week. The S&P 500 returned just over 3%, while the bond markets, as measured by the Bloomberg Barclays U.S. aggregate, returned a little less than 1%. How did the closed-end fund market respond? Well, yes, uh, the markets were up last week, but it did continue to be choppy as it's been for the past you know, six, seven weeks here. And really, most of that return occurred on Friday, with the S&P up around 2.7% for the day. And a great deal of that occurred very late in the day. But generally speaking, closing funds overall didn't fare too well. Now, I'm going to cite the First Trust family of indices, which I think provides a really good measure of closing fund performance. For the week, the composite index was pretty much flat. They have a taxable index that was down 1.5%. The equity index was up 0.9%. And the muni index was down 0.3%. These indices, they provide a nice snapshot on price movements in the closed-end fund space, but they don't really provide any insight into NAV performance. So last week, the average closed-end fund had a 1.7% return on net assets. And given the performance in the S&P, it really shouldn't be a surprise that the U.S. equity funds as a whole generated the best returns at around 2.4%. Can you be more specific in regards to any particular categories that may have stood out either positively or negatively? Uh, Sure. You know, as I mentioned before, closing fund prices were essentially flat. If we take a look at who's up and who's down, 252 funds had positive returns last week on market price, while 237 had negative returns and four were flat. Now let's compare that with net assets. On the net asset side, 436 funds generated positive returns, and only 47 were down. So clearly, the NAVs did well, considering that the underlying markets did well. Now, if we look a little more specifically, you know, which categories stood out? Well, MLPs did extremely well. If you take a look at the Alarian MLP index, it rose for the third consecutive week. And closed-end fund MLP funds, they returned 3.6% on market price and 6.7% on NAV. Now, another category I would point out that did very well, um, you know, I break it down as healthcare biotechs. Relatively small group of funds, there's only seven, but each was up in terms of price and NAV. The group as a whole returned 6.5% on market price and 5.9% on NAV. Now, if we look on the opposite side, negatively here, real estate funds did poorly, and that's whether they're domestic or global, they didn't do well. The average fund in this space declined 3.5%, while net assets fell 2.7%. I would also say uh, funds with exposure to lower-grade credit didn't do well on market price, and that's despite fairly solid performance on NAV. And probably the worst among these was the floating rate category. Now, this is one of the largest categories in the closed-end fund space. There's 32 funds there. And as a group, they returned 2.2% on NAV. The interesting thing is all but seven funds were in the red uh, for the week in terms of market price. And particularly hit hard were any of the funds that had very meaningful exposure to CLOs. Dennis, March was a particularly brutal month for equities as concerns over the spread of coronavirus eventually led to widespread shutdowns of businesses across the country, and states began imposing quarantines. The S&P generated a minus 12.4 percent return. That was the worst single-month performance since the financial crisis. On a brighter note, the index is up over 11 percent so far in April. How have closed-end funds fared? Well, uh, so far in April, closed-end funds are doing very well. The average closed-end fund is up 6.5% as of Friday. Uh, The average NAV is up 5.6%. Best performers, again, is MLP group. Uh, And, you know, we're 
roughly halfway through the month here, and, and they've returned over 24% on average on market price. From a valuation standpoint, how do things look? Have discounts narrowed? Week over week, no. They actually widened slightly by around seven basis points. And currently, as of Friday, the average discount in the closed end fund space is 7.68%. But without prices outperforming uh, NAVs on a month to date basis, the average closed end fund discount has narrowed by 114 basis points since the end of last month. And are valuations at attractive levels from an historical standpoint? Well, uh, let's be a little bit cautious here. If we go back the last 20 years, the average discount in the closed-end fund space has been 4.6%. Today, at roughly 7.7%, that's around a full standard deviation away from the norm. It's not bad, but it's not great. If we take a look out of 493 funds that I look at, 429 are at discounts. And of those, we have 365 that are trading at a, a level that is wider than their 52-week average. Now, that seems attractive. However, uh, there's a lot more to evaluating a closed-end fund than the level of the discount. And often, the level of the pr fund's premium or discount is not the most important thing to look at. You certainly have to take into consideration things such as the asset class, whether or not it employs leverage and how much leverage it employs, the liquidity. Uh, and given that, you know, the majority of closed-end fund investors purchase these securities, these funds for income, taking a look at the stability of the distribution is critical. Now, given how volatile the underlying markets have been, how sensitive they are on a nearly, I would say, minute-to-minute -minute basis on any developing news, it's tough to say there's a lot of value right now. It's very easy to look at these discounts and, and say things are attractive. And there are many um, professional managers out there that specialize in closed-end funds and can very effectively take advantage of any dislocations, you know, like we're seeing right now. You know, however, these managers, I want to emphasize, they specialize in that. That's all they do all day long. They are active traders, and they are looking at these dislocations constantly. It's what they do. This is not a strategy for individuals. No one has the time, and an individual has the time to look at these all day long, monitor these, monitor the historical dislocations there. If you're looking to adopt a strategy like that, I think you'd be better off investing in one of these closed-end funds or ETFs that, you know, that is the strategy. That's what they specialize in. So would I say there's attractive valuations? You know, yes and no. I would tread very cautiously here because I do believe the markets are going to continue to be volatile uh, for some time now. And you really should be concerned about what you're investing in. You should be taking a look at things other than the level of its discount. Dennis, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. And we want to thank you for tuning into another CEF Insights podcast. For more educational content, please visit our website at www.cefa.com.